What army do you propose we go pursue these studios with? Why would we need an army? Black magic? What are you we suggesting? have something that no one in Japan has. We're Americans. We have access to things, but we're going to leave it at that. I will John Wick my way through Sony till we get to the CEO. <clears throat> we will get the symbiotes. We will bring them to Marvel on a platter. We are so getting demonetized. I'm just... <laughs> I appreciate. I'm probably your getting arrested. No, I love Sony, so uh, please, please don't hurt Sony people. I like them. And on that note. Welcome to Nerdentials, your weekly dose of the nerdy essentials covering film, TV, video games, and comic books. I'm your host, Joe Tweeden, and tonight, it has been a few moments, uh, a few hot seconds since we have last recorded, but um, we're all gathered here today to talk some wonderful nerdy pop culture sh shit. So without further ado, joining me tonight uh, to, to my left here is the nick thomas welcome sir hello 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 i'm so happy to be here i'm so glad we are recording live from in color <laughs> you're very in color right now are you a little warm yeah you are dude are you saturated over there <laughs> it's the new camera <laughs> okay oh well it's showing off that, some sun did you get some sun light to the left of you mm. uh this is the light well, also joining us uh, is our uh, additional commentator down below right here, still still sporting the village background. We have the well, Ryan I think it's something else. <laughs> no, you're fine, dude. <laughs> Welcome, Ryan. How's it going? Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. There's been a lot of shit going on in pop culture lately. A lot. Yeah. Like, God damn this year has been big you know i feel like uh disney and netflix teamed up this week and said fuck your free time uh, fuck basically fuck the, fuck the other guy we're uploading this anyway and i think they <laughs> said that about both or about each other or something i don't know but and that and then and that's not even all of it you know there's a lot of a lot of other things going on but yeah ah classic mario brickland oh come on nick Something a little more contemporary. That's or contemporary. Nerdy. Or, yeah. or nerdy. However, whatever you like. That works. I have to log into here so I can change my fucking background. Uh, oh, Nick, I was going to say the other one made you look better off than you are. <laughs> Just kidding. I don't like, man, that looks better off than like I'm ever going to be doing, at least for the next 20 years. I was, I was just kidding. Uh, but anyway, guys, yeah, uh, despite all the, all the crazy amount of things that have come out, dropped, especially on streaming, um, so many things, so many things. And <sighs> even in gaming, uh, over the next couple, it will actually next month, we're going to have a whole bunch of showcases with a whole bunch of announcements and new things coming either end of this year or into the next. So a lot of cool, cool, fun things. Um, but guys, um, we're going to be a little more concise this week. We've got a couple narrow topics to cover, uh, in movie, TV and gaming. So Nick Ryan, without further ado, uh, if you guys saw the thumbnail on YouTube, you already know, or the title of this episode, you already know what we're jumping into. They have um, not told me anything that's happening. I have no idea what we're reviewing. Everything is a lie. <laughs> You're not supposed to spoil it. Ryan. They have kidnapped me. I'm in their I'm in their basement and they lock me up with this camera and I can only if I record these videos, I get fed. That's it. <laughs> and that's me. why that's why he's got a green screen. <laughs> Wait, who's feeding him? Shit. Oh maybe he's eating something meant for the animals of the house. <laughs> oh the cat, no the cat's been giving me <clears throat> kibble out of solidarity oh We're both i guess trapped here uh, well that's yeah i don't know how i feel about that sir we're gonna have to reevaluate your situation or you or you should fight for it i don't know 
I'm not fighting the cat. The cat will win. <laughs> All right. We definitely don't want to compete with that. Uh, guys, uh, quick, le- quick, real quick. Let's jump into uh, just some quick housekeeping. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, this is podcast episode 125, actually. Woo! Yeah, we finally we're finally there. Um, guys, you can uh, if you're seeing the video form, we're on YouTube, and uh, otherwise in podcast form, we're across. Uh, I need to I need to put out a script so I stop fumbling over the what's. Um, yeah, uh, Apple Podcasts, uh, Spotify, and wherever other podcasts are found that's where we're at and um guys if you want social links twitter and facebook and you want to see written reviews and things like that on top of the video content you guys can go to one particular location on the web nerdentialsmedia.com dot com that's right that's right. Nerdentialsmedia.com. That's where all our stuff is hosted and where the rest of our content lies. Um, all right. Well, guys, that's going to, I think that's it. I just going to keep it clean and simple. And we're just going to jump on into our first topic for the week, guys. We're going to do a movie review to kick off this episode. So without further ado, let's jump into Movie Matters. Dan Ryan's gone. <laughs> Must have been the smoke. It was intentional. I couldn't help it. I saw uh, an opportunity. Movie right, matters. Please. Yeah, movie matters. Welcome to movie matters, guys. Um, first off, uh, well, first up, and real, actually, kind of a singular thing uh, that me and Nick are just going to kind of cover, talk our feelings and thoughts on uh, movie wise. I'm excited. Before. Before moving on to our the rest of our episode, so uh, Nicholas, are you ready to talk about the sequel to Billions and Billions blue, of Dollars, the Blue Blur, the Blue Blur? Sorry, Nick just has like this particular orange glow to him. And well, he's also <laughs> I feel like that. he's he's going to be running for president next year. I don't know. I don't know. He's uh, <laughs> hold on one second. Sorry. About yeah, that. I I can't wait to watch this now. I'm prepared. Uh, all right, but no, Nick. All right, so <laughs> actually, hold on. Let me let's pull up the deets here, guys. We are talking about first up, Sonic the Hedgehog two, the sequel to shoot. What year was that? Twenty twenty for the first one. Twenty yes, twenty twenty, and then the this one released this year. Yes, this one just came out about a month ago. Uh, directed by Jeff Fowler, written by Pat Casey, Josh Miller, Josh Whittington for screenplay. And um, we got James Marsden returning, uh, the infamous Jim Carrey as Dr. Robotnik. Uh, ben Schwartz reprising his uh, vocal talents as Sonic the Hedgehog. And then uh, joining in this sequelitis of eras, we have the Idris Elba voicing the infamous Knuckles the Echidna. And then, um, hold on, I'm trying to find them. I'm trying to find the boy. Where's the boy? Boy, the boy, the Miles, boy. the Miles, the... Um, voiced by the original, who's Colleen. Shanahe. All right, well, Nick took the credit. That, oh, wait, there are. Yep, Colleen. Oh, Alice, she was the original? Boy. Nice. All right, yeah. Uh, voice in, of, in the video games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the two-tailed fox sidekick to Sonic the Hedgehog joins the cast. And um, this... And, and, and don't worry. This was Sonic the Hedgehog, not, not Sonic the, the Manhog. Abomination that we almost got for the first movie. Oh dear God! <laughs> yeah, well, we've moved way past that now, haven't we? The they they got it. They corrected it the first time, and upon uh, upon sequelizing it, 
they maintained true to the additional forest creatures that they've added to the mix. I, uh, I still think the man hog should have been like a villain that he had to face <laughs> just like his worst nightmare come true. It's just a, a horrible it's... misadventure and cloning. It's so disturbing though. <laughs> the teeth, the teeth got me. I'm like, what the fuck? The fact that like an animated hedgehog blue thing gave me uncanny Valley vibes, which is usually like reserved mm. for human faces that are not quite human. <laughs> Yeah, it says, yeah. says wonders about what the fuck they did there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but guys, to to make mm. this uh, description super broad, um, the synopsis for it is uh, the manic Doctor Robotnik returns to Earth with a new ally, in Knuckles. a gigantic mustache. And yes, we'll get into that in a minute. Knuckles the Echidna, Sonic, and his new friend Tails is all that stands in their way. Now, um. Funny enough, I, I do believe that that was. I mean, he he didn't he want to take over the world last time. I mean, wasn't that his general general desire before as well? I uh, like the, the the main new thing here is that he he's found a friend to go after Sonic with in his pursuit of pow, ultimate power. <clears throat> um, but but and but also, yeah, but. <laughs> That was cool though. Like um, they they uh, the second time around here, we got a lot more video game Sonic the Hedgehog video game references of like zones, um, Green Hill, right? Isn't that the city they're in on Earth? And it's it's based off the classic first stage in the games. Um, and then Doctor Robotnik, we see early in the movie, he's stuck in a mushroom filled world, and it's Donut Lord. <laughs> and it's very also reminiscent to all the all the gaming stuff. Um, also this time around, Jim Carrey is finally like we got a tease. I think wasn't it an end credit scene in the first one that kind of showed the Eggman appearance, right? And this time he's in full costume, full facial appearance, including the various silhouettes and color combinations, reds, blacks, and all that that he wore. And, and like I said the first time when we reviewed this, um, I feel that it took Jim Carrey 60 years to find the, his role that is him. <laughs> I don't think there's any man alive who could play Dr. Robotnik like him. No, it was perfect. Uh, last time we got a wonderful, uh, crazy, charismatic character was at, <clears throat> from, from him with, with all of that nuanced uh, spazzy acting that he's known for um, would have been the Grinch that stole Christmas live action version. I loved that movie for me as far as like, he was perfect for that too, but you're right. He, it was all that leading up to his final role <laughs> as Dr. Quite Ed, literally a final role. He said he wasn't going to play anymore, which I mean, and actors movies. have done that before, but yeah, he did claim this is he's retiring. He did say he would come out of retirement for one movie. Ace Ventura 3. I'd be okay with that. Hmm. I, well, I think that might, you know, maybe that'll lead some, uh, the studios into <laughs> going down that All path. All righty then. Um, but hey, let's... Um, I mean, there's not a lot of spoilery things. A lot of it's already in the trailer. I don't mind spoilers, so... I just... I just hit meant, me with your best shot, man. Shoot me with that shotgun of spoils. <laughs> I just, I, all I am implying is like from a listener standpoint, it, you know, if our listeners haven't seen it yet, I don't think there's a lot of huge spoilers here. Um, so I, we can kind of be broad. Did you, did you watch after the credits? I believe I did. I believe I sat through it all. Mm. And oh, by the way, because of after the credits, I think people should know. Oh um, yeah, no, the end credit scene. I did see that. Par yes. Paramount Pictures has already uh, uh, said that there will be a Sonic Three. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, I think they're talking the about end credits tells us exactly what it's going to be, and I'm fuck yes. Okay, so, let's I apologize. let's 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 give our general review, our rating, and then we'll put up a spoiler warning for that. I feel like we we should just yeah. you know because it's it's really an awesome feeling when you see it not knowing the scene. So let's save the, that for the end. Nick thoughts. The first on one was fantastic. 
Um, and I loved the first one. And it was probably one of the most apt renditions of a TV, I mean, I mean, a video game movie. And I loved everything that they did with it. Um, the second one, I felt was even better. So I'm going to tell you right That's now. That's rare. Yeah. It, it, it got a, a, a 10 out of 10 for me. Damn. For a That's rare for you. Movie. What did you give the first one? Did you give that one a 10? It'd be fine. I, if you did. I loved it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember because I. But I'm I, saying I mean, this one was even better. I know. That's I know. I understand. Um. All right. Yeah. I'll. Uh, you know. The I'll, reason why I thought it was better for me. Yeah. Is because I felt it was more video game accurate. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. Because of the full transformation of Eggman. Um, the. The. The they mustache kinda, and yeah, they they dove deeper into the uh, long claw and the the guardians, the the chaos emeralds, the, everything. To the do lore, with it. yeah, they the cover a lot of the more game. like lore of um, those characters. Yeah, because there's people that are like Super Mario people. There's people that are all, all the Zelda people. I'm I'm a Sonic person. Always have been. Always <clears> will be. Mm-hmm. I've always been a Zelda person, but I did love Sonic growing up. Absolutely. I mean, I did too. Uh, uh, ironically, I think I've told this story before in like gaming talks about our favorite games of all time and stuff, I think. Um, but I've, I've mentioned in the past that um, it was actually by accident that I became a Sonic fan because... I was homeschooled for, I don't know, six plus years uh, during middle mm-hmm. school, my middle school years. And at the time, I was really interested. I had a Nintendo, original Nintendo, and I was really interested in the Super Nintendo. And I told my parents that multiple times. And like it was rare. I didn't expect to get like a gaming system for Christmas. But that year that I thought I was getting a gaming system. I thought it was going to be a super Nintendo and they, I just, I don't know. My parents taught me real good on how to just like, ap- like appreciate in the moment of like disappointment. But I, I hope they, that they, you know, looking back that they didn't feel my disappointment, but I just like, I was like, uh, I didn't know what to think. I got a second gen assist instead of a super Nintendo. <laughs> and my, my parents thought that's what I wanted at the time. Like that. And it was, I just rolled with it. I was like, thanks. Kind of like, has it, I like, you know, I'm trying to sound excited yeah, and, and not sound ungrateful. <laughs> you like, they, they didn't realize which one I wanted. So because of a stroke of fate, I became a Genesis fan rather than continuing my Mario legacy, at least until the late nineties when the 64 came out. It's but that's fair. But that's why I became a Sonic the Hedgehog fan because of an accidental present. I had a similar experience, but more that <clears throat> I didn't get my uh, N64 or anything yet. My mom had started dating this uh, guy named Rodney. Oh, Rodney. His kids had the Genesis. And I, I can't even tell you how many fucking hours. After school, I had spent playing Sonic. <laughs> like, just like this is the best thing ever. I gotta go fast. <laughs> Let's go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then uh, I got Man 64, and you know, things after that. Like, I got back into Nintendo stuff, but like, there's a good like two years where it's just Sonic every day, except for weekends when I hang out with my buddies. Same. Now, Same. The, o- the only thing for me that would actually do better than Sonic if they ever made it into a movie that I would. Say, take my money, take my wallet. You can have it. Would be a Mega Man movie. As long as they did it right, I'd be absolutely right there with you. They got to do it right. Yeah, because Mega Man is fucking top tier. Mm-hmm. I'm absolutely. terrible at it, but I love it. Um, or Kirby. Ooh, I'd watch a Kirby. And as long as it was animated, like I mean, Kirby it- himself. Yeah, well, they could they could go like the 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 Pokemon the Pikachu Pokemon yeah, detective, detective Pikachu route. style. You know, that I thought the animation on that was good. But anyway, guys, hold, hold on. We side, side sidelining <laughs> here. Um, Nick gave it a ten out of ten. Um, let's let's get into it a little further. Let me get my give you guys my rating. Um, 
<clears throat> Honestly, um, I really liked the first one as well. And I don't remember what I gave it. I think I'd be shocked if I went lower than an 8 or a 9. I feel like it was pretty high. If it wasn't a 10, I don't remember. I'd have to go back uh, and look upon it because I haven't seen it since then. But <clears throat> this one... I do feel personally was actually I I liked even more than the first one. The first one felt a little more slow paced, a little too much of the real world, which I you know I get it. They want to bring in some big name actors here and there to, to draw a crowd, you know. And honestly, Jim Carrey is that draw. Sorry, I got cats in the background for anyone that heard that. Hey man, cats are their own thing. We can't control them. <laughs> Agreed. We know this, but um, like Jim Carrey himself was enough of a draw, I think, for a lot of people that may not be as familiar, you know. Uh, but who's not with Sonic? What I'm getting at though is, um, first one was just a little slower than this one. This one had faster, more fun pacing, uh, super cheesy pop culture references here and there. But you know what? It just it felt Sonic to me. It didn't. It didn't matter. Like that didn't take it. That didn't take me out of it at all. Um, the inclusion of uh, Knuckles and Tails was a lot of fun, um, and I even like the overly. Like I know there were some complaints about the portrayal of Knuckles, but I like. I actually liked that brooding, take everything literally approach. He kind of had a Drax feel about him. You know, it was all about honor and and family well, and legacy and I mean, that's this is early knuckles was no, I, mm -hmm. I know but what i'm saying is like i, I don't know I'm the ultimate like, warrior i know that the newer one has a lot more like kind of like i, th I think kind of dumber and he has a lot of things go over his head and stuff but like the well, older one was he was dumb in the sense that he just didn't understand that's what i'm saying i'm gonna, that's what i'm saying is yeah. i think some people are being critical because they thought he was being too dumb of a character yeah. but the, i think idris elba did a great job and even the screenwriting was was like the the lines given to him played out the same way in that like it's just a, a it's just a um a disconnect between what's going on versus what he knows and it's not because he's dumb it's yeah. just he's taking things at face value and didn't understand robotics intentions at first and i like the quick turnaround you know about spoiler-ish warnings i guess we won't dive too much into that particular part yet but um i love the, the chaos emerald storyline angle is very everything was very nick if you're gonna be fumbling around with some loud plastic you should mute yourself <laughs> <laughs> or um, share no, you're not alone i made some noises or share nick what is that? Thank you. Yeah, I don't. What are you eating? Nick's keto snacks for the day are uh, keto nuggets. nuggets. Keto nuggets. Dark are those chocolate? like the birthday cake ones that are at a uh, Christmas shed? No, these are uh, coconut, pumpkin seeds, quinoa, and sunflower seeds. Oh, that actually sounds bomb as fuck. Mm -hmm. They're crunchy. They're kind of sweet. Well, we definitely heard the crunch. <laughs> no. Oh, thank you. Uh, that's that's shout out to all you ASMR fans. That's for you. We'll anyway, be right back with our scheduled programming after these commercial messages. <laughs> <laughs> you get a little jingle going. Do you feel hungry occasionally for loud, crunchy sounds? Do you well, like annoying now. your children when they're watching <laughs> cartoons? <laughs> Buy our new album. And, oh, it's like yeah, the greatest hits album. There's all so the greatest hits. Can you take me higher? No, no, no Ryan. Greatest hits. We've got the Snicker oh, Crunch. <laughs> We've got the Milky Way Slurp. Don't forget the, the Caramel shuffle? Sip. And best of all, the final track is the Coffee I slightly burnt my tongue on palm <laughs> sipping. <laughs> we like to call that the dragon breath. Get your four CD collection that. now for three easy payments of fourteen ninety seven or ninety five. Must be eighteen or, or older to order. Out to order. Sorry, uh, only really old millennials 
or kids from the 90s will understand these infomercial references. Dude, but wait, there's I more. slightly miss those. I do. They were fun. <laughs> and now, in our older age, fun to make fun of. Yeah. Billy Mays here. Okay. Billy Mays here with a new screen. <laughs> Let's move on. All right. No, but okay. Uh, honestly, ready? Though, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm going to give this. I enjoyed every single moment of this, Nick. Uh, top to bottom, funny. I like. I could pretend to be critical about it, but this is like at the end of the day, this is a popcorn flick, and they hit enough beats of nostalgia for the fanboys of the gaming franchise that I just I have to give it a ten. I have to ask it, you really quick: if yeah. it weren't a gaming movie, would it still be fun? Absolutely, no nostalgia involved. Yeah, still a great movie. I I think I think nostalgia plays just a small little bit into this. Yeah, but, but if someone had not known anything about Sonic and just came into this, like, okay, would a my parent kids. enjoy it if they had not known? Um, well, I would even say, like, I understand this is like geared towards kids, and yeah, well, of but course. but yeah, it, it's a fun movie still. Okay, it's it's silly. It's f- the ref- there is humor. I can't say like it's like a Marvel level. Well, yeah. Everyone's gonna laugh at this crap, but but it's, it's a light. Fun movie. It's fun and it's lighthearted, and it, it hits where it needs to hit. There's some subtle emotional moments here and there um, that are not overplayed. You know, like so it's it's got a well rounded feeling for everyone. I think, but is it still fun if no one's played the video game? Yes. There's references there for the true believers, but the yeah. ge- the movie in itself was laid out in a way that you don't need to have the references to understand it, and you'd still appreciate it. And you would just think when they show these things, like, "Whoa, that's cool!" When the people that have know what it's all about are like, "Whoa, that's really fucking cool." I don't know if I'll keep this in for the edit. I'm just kind of throwing this in. We could talk a few more minutes. I turned off all the audio, but every time I include trailers that are not gaming related, we get a copyright strike. Let's just put on Sonic Adventure Battle and say that's the movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and pretend we're playing it. I can pull, pull up a controller right now and she's like, there we go. But the animation's good. Like, if you guys look at this just briefly, like, you know, like Tails looks great. Sonic is as good as they had made him when they fixed him. And there's Eggman. I don't have a controller nearby. The secondary character, Nick, uh, the man that made his lattes, I feel is like a replacement for Snively or Snively, however you want to pronounce it. Like the the sidekick from the comics for Dr. Robonic, that guy right there. I gotta say, I really like the animation they did. The way Knuckles looks in this looks really good. Yeah, I thought they did a great job with Knuckles. <clears throat> I, I um, love the mustache. That's fucking yep. great. It works. And like I like the only thing they didn't do if, make you know, is make him super fat. Yeah. And you don't Which need, they could but, do in a third. But with well, Jim Car- with Jim Carrey's like performance and yeah. t- and comedy timing, I don't think that's it's necessary. I'm not. We're not missing it, in my opinion. Here's, here's the thing, though. Not every iteration of Doctor Robotnik is he fat. You're right. A lot of the Eggman connotations are actually a very thin, slender version <laughs> of that. You're right. <clears throat> what? What? Well, good. Well done. Pun there. <laughs> Whether it was intended or not, that was well done. I missed it. It's over my head. So if it was from me, it was unintended. Awesome. That's even better. <laughs> but yeah, all right. Well, I mean, dude, uh, okay, real quick. I guess I want to throw this out there. Let's let's have a, a quick conversation about the end credit scene. I just for our listeners' sake, because uh, Ryan doesn't care, here is a spoiler warning. Warning. Spoiler alert. Warning. Spoiler alert. You have been warned. All right, friends, you have been warned. There will be a time stamp 
just for all of you that want to skip this. So uh, skip ahead, look for the timestamp, and rejoin us. We'll uh, we'll see you when you get back. All right, Nick. End credit scene. Give us your hot take. Um, what do you know of him? I I haven't played any of the games where this character that was revealed has been in what it. What character is it? Oh. Um, I just have to say one word, and Ryan will know exactly what I'm talking about. Shadow? Shadow. Yes! Yes! Oh, hell yeah. I'm excited. Uh, Yes. So Um, it was a short end credit scene. mm -hmm. That makes me really hype. They basically say they've been working on a clone for this long, and it shows the shadow in all his glory, and it looks exactly what we His emo edginess. I Uh fucking love it. In a tank. Yeah, it's just a very short take there. I'm just going to show a picture for anyone unfamiliar. If you're watching our video, there's Shadow. You might be able to actually get the after credit scene to show up. Oh, probably. Probably. I just wanted to throw this up there for a quick second. I like Shadow way better than Sonic. Even though that one Um, game was so fucking terrible, shooting enemies as Shadow with guns was fucking great. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I've played a couple games with him in it, but obviously he was a, a character that came much later yeah. in the franchise. And <coughs> Nick, Nick, for the hardcore nerds, can you think of whether or not he appeared in the comics first or the games? Because I'm pretty sure he was a comic book introduction. Because I know um, the games came out before the comic books for all no, the I'm pretty sure comic. The, the comic book was first, and they dove into him more within with the game yeah i that sounds right okay here it's uh let's see what is this oh might not oh it's someone explaining it i don't want to play that i just yeah, want to see we're scene. doing that right now yeah we're talking about it right now okay i want to watch someone else talk about it right now <laughs> fuck those I, I mean i'm sure they're great people you are no. so aggressive sir I'm so tired and on like three hours of sleep. So yes, yeah, very aggressive today. All Who's right, this guy? Nope. That's there the coffee go. guy. The guy that nope. makes Robotnik's coffee. That's the yeah. coffee guy. There's, there's the link for you. Oh, it's right here. He's here, pretty. Just, just cut to this spot right oh, here. I sent you one. I like her. Seconds. Sorry. Well, this one's forty something seconds, but there's the end mm-hmm. credit scene there, Mr. Ryan. And he I love as, it. He looks as good as the game. I love it. He looks better. I'm in. Ooh, I'm watching glow. these. I'm watching both of them this week, dude. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it's really well done. I feel. Um, agreed. Agreed. I'm fucking hyped. This is great. Uh, well, sir. Uh, that's a rating. Uh, us two that have watched it liked it. Um, this is the end of our spoiler moment here. We're we're now moving on, guys. Um, Nick, you ready? Should we jump into our next area? TV? Yeah. So yes. uh, actually, before we jump into that, um, okay. I asked you a question in a text message. I'm wondering, did we cover that in an actual episode, or did we just talk about covering it and never actually cover it? Cover what? Oh, the th- you you no, we didn't cover it yet at all. Would you um, like to do a trailer react? <clears throat> yeah, let's throw it in here. Why we're still in movies. Yeah, yeah we probably should. <clears throat> All right, so real quick, cutting back to <laughs> guys, we are um actually we got How one the more fuck thing did you to do. do. What? Why do I don't know? I How the fuck? Not why? How? He's a wizard. <laughs> no, no, that's not, that. The second one you did there didn't sound the same. The first one it sounded like you actually rewound yourself. How did you do that? <laughs> Tongue, tongue noises. I don't know. I did. Oh, it's one of those tricks. Yeah, one of those tricks. I actually have the trailer queued up because I, prior to recording, I thought hmm, Nick suggested this as things we should do for the next recording. So, and because this movie is literally only a few weeks away, it's literally less than a month away. It's right around the corner. We should definitely react to Thor: Love and Thunder. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, guys. Thor, Thor 4, officially. Thor 4, Love and Thunder. Um, and this, is the, this is the full two-minute trailer, Ryan. We're going to throw in some audio, and we're going to react to it live. You you ready, sir? Let's do this. All right, let's 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 do it. Let's Roll react. that beautiful bean footage. You ready? You ready? Here we go. Cue it up. 
kids get the popcorn now. Let me tell you the story. He's back. Viking. The oh, space oh. Viking. He was no ordinary. God damn. He was a god. After saving planet Earth for the 500th time, Thor set off on a new 500th <laughs> time. <laughs> he got in shape. Oh, look, working he out. There's the dad there. bod. Dude, he's doing the, the god thing. God. Oh, I got and some rocky, rocky montages. As the oh! One and only Thor. Look at that thing crackle. Oh, spoke too soon. Jane? Oh, snap. Oh, shit. The She's back. Girlfriend. What's it been like? Three, four years? <laughs> Eight years, seven months, and six days. Give or take. <laughs> Jesus. <Yeah. laughs> Who's coming? Uh, Sensing The only ones who gods care about. I am excited for this villain, Nick. Is themselves. It's Kratos. Christian Bale. Gore the God Butcher. Gore the God Butcher. Fuck yeah. Oh, next month. Oh. And they got the goats. See what you did back there. <laughs> oh, oh shit. shit! They're just split. You never forget your first. That was. Oh yeah. Zeus. I love the subtle eighties fucking thing. Oh, oh, Zeus, yeah. You have something worth fighting for. Oh I, I love the little 80s thing going on here. It's fucking great. This Let's is amazing. All right. I take off your disguise. <laughs> and flick. <laughs> damn. Oh, flick too hard, damn it. <laughs> flick God, too hard. Damn. <laughs> and eventually. Great. Right? Yeah. Should we do something? Eventually. <laughs> July 8th, friends. July 8th. Ooh. Nice. God damn. Okay. All right, well, guys. I think there's a certain scene we need to go right back to. <laughs> what, the, the last one, Ryan? <laughs> yes. Enter, entertain you a little bit? <laughs> okay. You look at that. Too look hard. at that. <laughs> Holy shit. Do we need to pause on that? <laughs> wow. <laughs> God damn. Like, he, he shredded up for this movie. He's like, he's bigger than he was in any of the others. And mm -hmm. not just not just size, but like the definition yeah, is like shredded. Yeah, holy fuck! And do, you, and do you like the little fact that they blurred his butt yeah. right there? <laughs> no, I need to take a date to see this. <laughs> I need to take a date to see this. This is good. This is gold. I love the fact that they all fainted. All the this women. This is the date movie right here. He's like, oh my goodness! <laughs> They're like, the oh. Natalie Portman's back. That I am so fucking hyped for this. Yeah, but I, lo I love oh, the 80s themes going July on. 8th. She's playing the mighty Thor guy. It's a comic iteration. Jane Foster becoming Thor, uh, known as mighty right. Thor. Um, yeah. But yeah, the first female Thor is being represented on screen. Um, that was the all black necro sword. Yes, there's a lot to break down here. Like, shoot, I mean, let's just do some hot takes. Otherwise, this could this itself could have been a whole episode if we let it if we let it be. Uh, and, and it might be. Maybe we'll just do movie and TV. I don't know. Let's see what we got time for. Um. Uh. So yeah. Uh. Gore the God Butcher. Um. We've got yeah, and you saw him uh, stab that sword into what looked like a a moon or a gigantic rock. Not sure who or what he was killing there. Um, and then, um, what's his name? Taika Waititi's character, Korg, mm -hmm. is reading a, a story of the legend of Thor, God of Thunder, to these people. These uh, blue-faced indigenous people. So we're not really sure. I'm not, I don't think it's Yondu's homeworld, but... There is that possibility. There's some sort of connection because in previous trailers, which we haven't covered on our show, but they've been online for a while, uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy with Thor do visit a planet, um, you know, to help the people out there for whatever reason. Yeah. So not sure what, it, how much of that involvement is going to be. 
in that fir- earlier trailer, uh, Peter Quill kind of tells Thor that they need to go their separate ways. You need to, you know, find your people. And then he, you know, points to the guardian saying, these are my people. And so then it's kind of like a, like a, you know, if That's you remember Peter the wills found, found family, he needs to find his own family. Yeah. What was, uh, was it Thor Ragnarok that after he, after he finished, you know, everything there that he went off with the guardians or was it the end of, it was end of, uh, it was Ragnarok, um, right? It was end of Avengers, or was yeah, it end of, uh, end end of, of Avengers? Because Ragnarok mm-hmm. was where they were coming to Earth. So it was an end game. Yeah, right? and that he, was one he of the meets uh, the rabbit, mm-hmm. and the Avengers. And then he he left Valkyrie. Uh, he left her to take care of. Yeah, of uh, their city, the new uh, their new people. Asgard. Yeah. Um, but, let's get some hot takes. Let's throw some hot takes of what we did see. We have Brian. the hottest take in one image. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> okay. How about and Natalie secondary? Portman's in the movie? So yeah. we have two of the hottest takes in the entire movie with the main actors. A- any third it's hot been like takes, four right? years? Eight, eight years. Oh, no. Uh, this days. looks fucking great. <clears throat> um, like Christian Bale and Natalie Portman returning now. And we've got Mjolnir back. Everything in this looks fucking awesome. Well, and interestingly enough, there's a couple things I want to nerdy things I want to uh, bring up real quick and to get you guys' thoughts on. Um, yeah. uh, Mjolnir, since you just said that, let's talk about that for a second. It's been um, obviously repaired. When we well, true, but it's got cracks all over it. Yeah. When Helena destroyed it, and so it looks like it has self repaired, but it's got it's continue. It it's like keeping those cracks, and then yeah. Um, I thought what was really cool is she's displaying a new attack move video game style where she threw the hammer towards a group of enemies and the hammer like burst into multiple pieces, yeah. knocking all those enemies down and then presumably reforming. Yeah, it's so like it looks, a shotgun now. Yeah, it looks like we got like a, a new ability there. At, okay, Nick, can you on. commentate on the comic book accuracy? Is that really new? quick? That leaves me with a question. Okay, throw the question out, and then we'll get Nick's comic Nick. book reference take. Nick, mm-hmm. because it does that, is each individual piece enough to weigh a person down to the ground? I would think, presumably. Because you could like restrain a <laughs> lot of fucking people with those pieces, <laughs> if it is. You're not wrong. Um I, I don't know movies. if I don't know if the the enchantment works on the individual pieces. I think it only works when it's together. Fair, that's, but that's just your theory. We don't have any. The hammer's to... made from a star, isn't it? Hmm. Yeah. So it's like it, it, like there's a lot of science that would go into that, and I don't want to bring that up here because we could be here all day talking about <laughs> this. So I'm going to leave it. <laughs> uh, but I thought that was cool. Mjolnir uh, was like coming towards Thor, and, and then, then it whoop. got pulled back to someone else, and that's where we get the reveal. Good uh, for Jane Foster. Um, in the comic books, we know uh, that she was uh, learned to have, and we've covered this before on previous podcasts. Um, but that she has had or has cancer prior to becoming this new mighty Thor. Um, Do have we heard, or do we think that that it sounds like that maybe that might be brought up or included maybe in this storyline? I don't know. I think it would make sense. Um, There's no other reason why um, Jane Foster would be suddenly worthy around it. Right. Hmm. But I think uh, something per- precipitates that that joining. Yeah, but yeah. So I'm like, I mean, that's the I, it would it would make sense so. to follow it. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, uh, but please. it probably won't be cancer. It'll probably be something similar, but because of what the damage that was done to her body from uh, the ether. Oh, that is right. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's this true. I mean, they'll probably tie that in somewhere. somewhere by the Aether. Could it have okay, had now, some, oh. Did it have something to do with Thanos' uh, Endgame event? Now, this is what. You, hold on, Ryan. That's what you're saying that. and what Nick just mentioned about eight years, because Thor was very specific about it. Um, there's two aspects about this time questioning, like how uh, Jane goes very, you know, coyly. How long has it been? And it was like, I don't know, three, four years. Um, I think they did that for two reasons. One, Jane cared a, maybe a bit less about the relationship at the time. So one of those things where the, the person that was scorned or during the breakup or whatever, you know, that Thor being the more yeah. emotional here is like, well, I remember every day and he's kind of sharing it that way. And to her, she's like, Oh, I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't think it was that long, but I think there's another technical reason behind it. And I know Nick knows where I'm going is that the snap was five years. You add five years to the three or four that she yeah. was guessing at. So for her, it was, it might only feel like three or four years because she yeah. may have been snapped out. And depending where she ended up and getting Mjolnir, a lot of events could have happened that kept her distracted from finding out about so I feel, that just happened. Yeah, so there's a, there's a good justification for that conversation happening where... It's actually been eight years for Thor, but literally only three or four for her. It's a good yeah, thing for her that he out. ages very slowly. <laughs> well, yeah, right. Uh, what was that, Nick? He wasn't snapped out. No, I exactly. So no, he was getting pwned by uh, he, 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 he <laughs> the Sorcerer Supreme at the now. He was slipping into alcoholism. And getting his ass handed to him by Noob Master. Yeah, <laughs> what was it? Was it Who Fortnite? is uh, the current Fortnite? Yeah, they're playing Fortnite, and it was con- I think it was confirmed by Taika Waititi that uh, it is uh, what's his name, the other sorcerer, Beyonce. Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, no, no, no. It, in in Doctor Strange, he calls uh, Wong Beyonce. Oh, fair enough. Yes, Beyonce. Beyonce is new master. <laughs> oh. Did you forget about that reference? No, I'm just seeing a really cool image that I want to sh- I'm going to share with you guys in a second. Um cuz I had I had one more topic and if you guys have anything else you want to add to it, um we'll cut we'll talk about it here, but um Gore, the God Butcher's appearance. Uh, Nick, you are well, way more experienced in your feelings of what we see in the comic books, and I'm going to bring up some images to make the comparison, but how do you feel? Uh, it doesn't mean it won't change or adjust or mutate, but um, like... Well, he's not see. wearing any armor. I'm, I'm okay with what he is, because he's got to be... Uh, <clears throat> The best way of putting it, he's supposed to be very sinister. He's not supposed to be like overpoweringly big and bulky and everything like that. No, he is no. just creepy, sinister, almost like Voldemort. Uh, mm. okay. Well, I wanted to make a comment about that. I think, um, so you like or don't like Christian Bale's I, appearance? I am perfectly fine with it now I like because it. I know. The depth I'm, of which Christopher Bale acts with anything he touches. Right, right. Uh, Ryan, have you seen this comic book version of Gore the God Butcher before? Because this is what yeah. it looks like in the comics. Yeah. So, like, what Nick was saying is, as I'm moving the mouse around here, the no. Oops. I know the, the nose no, is the obviously nose different. But... Is <clears throat> well, Nick was saying a Voldemort feel yeah. to his face. Um, and again, in these comic That's book it's versions, very aptly put. In these comic book versions, um, even the comic book version, he's not overly armored here, no. but the face and the stuff going down the side here is a I bit know, more exaggerated. As I soon as I saw him grabbing intensity. the sword, I knew who it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think no, the I intensity that um, he, this actor is going to be able to com- convey, honestly, he could do it better than a lot of other actors out there. Yeah. I feel like he's going to do it. Like you, that you can take the nose thing aside and a few other visual aspects. He's going to kill it. Literally. Um, oh no. <laughs> yeah. Well, absolutely. And I'm, 
I'm glad they're going this way instead of making another Squidward char- Squidward character. Yeah. On another note, I think I figured out how to save the DCEU. <laughs> I figured it out. Oh, interesting. Go on. Do you want to know the secret? Don't t- do tell. The secret to saving the DC Cinematic Universe is to make a Lobo movie. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, see? Not wrong. Um, no, like, yeah. Oh, yeah I, back I, to this. I just want I just want to say real quick. I like my personal thought is like I thought nothing of it because for one, I never saw the comic book version before the trailer. Yeah. I just saw him and knew that that I could recognize Christian Bale's mouth once he opened his mouth <laughs> briefly, and I was like, oh. And I already knew from articles and podcasts uh, that he was going to play Gore the God Butcher. I was like, okay, for like that's, what, that's what he's going to look like, but. I found I saw an image here. I'm gonna throw this up here and see what you guys think. I don't know if it's deviant art, so like I'll cut it out if I if I later find out it belongs to someone. I don't think it's Hollywood. I I'm not entirely sure. It comes from pixels3.com. I'll look into it later. I'll cut it out if I need to. This looks like concept work for what if like they were gonna do a mutation, either what they wanted him to look like before. Yeah. And maybe me and my only thought, what I've heard from podcasts of a couple things. One, maybe Christian Bale didn't want to wear all those prosthetics. I don't blame or, him. Or, yeah, I'm sure that's understandable for some you know particular actors. It just might have been way too much for him to want to put on. Um, secondly, that's maybe heavy. this maybe the studio was like, ah, it is it's too much like Voldemort. Man, maybe we don't. Yeah. Maybe we scale it back. Or is there? Is there any lore about Gore the God Butcher where he starts out a certain way and changes over time through that his killings? Does know. he does he mutate Nick? Because I've heard another podcaster make that recommendation or a theory, a theory rather. Meaning, could we see it start out like this on the picture here on the right and then see him mutate into this end being? here for whatever reason or I can see that happening because like that sounded like a plot point that might happen maybe this whole thing's a facade him looking like this this is just the well, mask itself well correct me if i'm wrong nick um that two things we know uh, i'll t- i want to talk about his backstory briefly but we also know that marvel teases a lot of things like they they change certain things in trailers before ultimately revealing what happens and look for example uh thor ragnarok thor losing his eye in the end game trailer the first time we ever saw it he had both his eyes but in the final cut of the movie he had an eye patch now here he has his eyes oh one of them is fake probably yeah Yeah, it got got replaced by rocket raccoon gave him a replacement eye but that was one of that's one example of the rabbit replaced his eye Marvel misleading us through trailer. Same thing with the infinity stones. There was a couple stones missing from an old cut Continuity. Of the trailer, blah, blah, blah. But Marvel does this intention is all I'm saying. And I'm just wondering if this is complete pure concept art speculation, or do you see, do you see an iteration of Christian Bale mutating? because of his murder murder spree um i don't know um but i could tell you that uh gore wasn't human in the comic books so this is their own take on it right and i'm fine with you know walking away from that and just being like yeah it is what it is uh gore was a hairless creature with the tendrils i'm pretty sure from what they kind of look like that him and uh, Eben uh, Eben Sewer or Ebony Ma. Sorry, Ebony Ma. <laughs> Eben might Sewer. Be, that's great. Might picture. might be the same race. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah, here's a. Oh, and then he's got some extensive joints here, but this is like a, a statue version of the comic book version. I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, he would have had to be way more CG'd, and because they have a big name like Christian Bale portraying him, they wanted to simplify it a little bit, perhaps. Um, 
But anyway, um, the, all I wanted to mention about the backstory that uh, we know from the comics is he that... He does have a very distinguishable mouth from like 90% of the human race. Oh, Christian Bale, the actor. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I didn't think about that. Like I immediately <laughs> saw the cheekbones and eyebrows, but yeah, looking at the yeah. mouth, yeah. That's Batman. Like, hey, American Psycho. Oh, wait, no. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> That's where he's from, yeah. No, but um, the Gore the God Butcher goes on a killing spree because he prayed to the gods to protect or heal his wife and kid and they they were taken away from him or died is like the basic backstory yeah. and he decides that he wants revenge on all the gods because none of them answered his so when i his, said kratos <clears throat> i was kind of right hmm. yeah i mean this is a human looking pa pallid white dude oh on revenge another... against gods using a weapon Another side note is that Marvel likes to give us sympathetic villains. Case in point, Thanos, making him have a very complex human. I mean, instead of being a simp for the god, uh, god problems, death. and and yeah, and then Gore having lost his family and being on a, a bloodlust for revenge. Understandable. They they might want I to make him. The studio might want to make him less alien and a little more Christian Bale so that we can connect with him emotionally through his performance. Um, Speculation. I don't know. Well, another thing that this could tie in, I'm not sure if you guys realize this. I don't. Uh, oh, Gore dear. the God Butcher, he gets his super strength and powers and everything from the sword. Yeah. The I all black that's where you're going. sword. Mm-hmm. Which is actually a symbiote. I did not know that. That uh, symbiote is Null. Oh, the I know who that is. God. Except I did not know that that's what the sword was. Yeah, I've I've listened to another conversation where that was brought up. Um, so I was I only recently familiar. I didn't know that before. <laughs> um, but my thought is they're either going to leave it out entirely or explain it away in a different way because unfortunately Sony still owns a hundred percent of the symbiote. You know what could fix that aspect? What? I Sony <laughs> us, us three. Oh, us. Yes. And we yeah. sell it to Marvel for twice as much as we paid for. That would take a lot of pull, sir. And I just, I don't know. Anything is possible with enough violence. <laughs> what army do you propose we go pursue these studios with? Why would we need an army? Black magic? What are you we suggesting? have something that no one in Japan has. We're Americans. We have access to things. But we're going to leave it at that. <laughs> I will John Wick my way through Sony till we get to the CEO. <clears throat> we will get the symbiotes. We will bring them to Marvel on a platter. We are so getting demonetized. I'm <laughs> I appreciate. I'm probably your getting arrested. <laughs> I appreciate your tenacity, sir. I do. No, I love Sony. So uh, please, please don't hurt Sony people. I like them. I I would just love Sony to work a little bit alongside. Yeah, Marvel, that's really well, they right. have, and they they I they. I, I'm I pretty know. sure they will. I just want more I Venom. Know. And well, that's that's not a problem. They're I, Venom, but I want Venom, Venom with Spider Man. I know, but well, but to, I know, I know. To Nick's know. previous point, to Nick's previous point though, is that that is a f interesting connection that that sword is imbued with is essentially the soul essence or powers of the symbiote god which and is connected to venom and carnage and all those other symbiotes and Maybe speaking of spider -Man, crossover next episode right i have another trailer react we gotta do i'm down what's coming as a teaser what's coming nick into the spider-verse yeah oh yeah that's a good I'm one so yeah. excited for that one let's break that down next next recording um i, a, I want a john wick venom crossover <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get nutty with this. We got a John Luke fanboy here. Yeah, I understand. Like, he's great. I even saying. have the comics. Well, boys, do we want to jump into TV some TV talk? Yes. yes, I absolutely do because I've been like 
in, internally raving and waiting for this moment because I am so fucking hyped for what we're talking about. Yes. All right. Well, guys, I even have here. my top three ready. And oh, when shit. we and when we do this one, I think after we're done with the TV talks, we should do another trailer for the show coming out on the third. Yeah. I'm down. We can do a short one for that if, it's if, if you're getting tired. Which one? Let's roll. What do you think? The third. The that boys. I thought was the sixth. Shh. I know. I just got a lot to catch up on, guys. It's all We're going to talk on. about the boys. Okay. Right, guys. I, I will be ready for that. Uh, Slipping in and out. In and out. Boys. And out and in. Guys. going to slip in and out of the boys. <laughs> Let's jump just in. Just like a glove. You. Tight. TV talk. And he's gone again. <laughs> That's kind of cool. You magnificent both coon. Yeah, every time you you do that, dude. Yeah, no. I, I, every time <laughs> this comes up, I want to do that. It's fun. <laughs> I think the last one I kind of fucked up a bit. Only a little. Friends, welcome to TV Talk. Uh our one and only particular show that we're going to dive into, talk about, nerd out on, is a fun anthology-based series that has been on Netflix now for nigh... 19, 2019 was the one. Four years out. ago. Yeah, four years now. Uh, so They skipped a year due to COVID, unfortunately. Sadly. Yeah. But we are on a, uh, a season three of Love, Death, and Robots. Uh, an anthology series of various storytelling and animation styles, uh, ultimately created by Tim Miller. Um, and a lot of voice acting, so we're kind of just going to give our thoughts and feelings on it. I, there's just a lot of people involved. And to break down specific seasons is going to be a little hard. So I'm we're just going to kind of give our hot take feelings about the previous seasons and how this season felt. So, Nick, I'm going to throw it to you real quick. Um, how has this series of anthology storytelling felt to you? And how did you feel about the new season? Well, you you never have to watch the same thing twice which is great <laughs> um yeah but it's it's always unexpected no matter what you get into and that's what i love about it um i thought the season was great um I, I felt it was a lot more put together than last season yeah There were there were some uh, a few surprise stories in my in my opinion, because um, with the first couple first two seasons, I mean there were surprises in each season, but yeah. um, it was a lot of sci fi stuff in the first two seasons. Um, and the one thing I will say about all the seasons um, is I just I love the gritty, really adult feel of all of them both graphically and thematically it's not just um it's not just about being grotesque or overly sexual about any of it it's also like super deep psychological sci-fi yeah concepts adult themes like that you know just like our questioning our existence or and sometimes it's just a wild fun ride there's you know that like season Mason's one rats <laughs> yeah exactly season one or season three, sorry, we're talking about, um, opened up with the fun three robot trio. I was so happy to see them back. Coming back from the previous season. And they're just kind of ex exploring facets of humanity in a post-apocalyptic setting where all humans are dead. <laughs> and um, vacation. with the exception of cats, at least in season two, it was a lot of cats. And then we got a nice little teaser scene at the end of that one. Um, and then what you mentioned, sir, the the animation styles are pretty wide range um, from semi photorealistic CG to very stylized hand animated cartoons. Um, the rat one 
was a uh, very unique CG is still <laughs> yeah. CG. It reminded me of uh, the first seasons, like dumps, like the dump episode where he's fighting that monster out in the dump. It reminded yeah, me of yeah, that yeah. animation style, but yeah. I, th- I felt this one was a lot more fun. Dude, talk about one of the bloodiest episodes I've uh, that I think we've seen in a while from this. Like, it wasn't my absolute favorite <laughs> in the season, but God, it's my top three. It's probably my number three. It was just fun to see, like the yeah. cons, just to like t- uh, tease the concept. It, the freaking it, it, like I goes from a farmer. A f- but a f- there's a sorry. Terminator reference in it. And I loved it. Yeah. I won't say anything else if anyone hasn't seen it, but <laughs> go watch it. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's great. Yeah. There's a, it, it took, it went from the a, a farmer's perspective of just having a rat infestation constantly messing with his, Moonshine. his farm stuff. And then it goes on from like to the end where there's a, like, we're now seeing the rats perspective and them somehow reconciling each other's worlds you know yeah. and in and, and differences and it was it took, the rats had this like world war ii setting from yeah. their perspective it was just it was funny gory and kind of heart, heartfelt at the end there yeah um the the most bizarre one of all that's like getting awards and is like so oh, uh, like Jabari? cg you talking about jabara yeah, Jabaro is. Um, yeah, Jabaro. I under I understood kind of what was going on um, yeah, at first. It was super super artsy in how it was presented, though. Yeah, uh, you know, it was kind of like this forbidden love story. Uh, this siren chick is like f- fearful of men and like just killing any men that come near her, and then her whole body's covered in like the jewelry and treasures of these dead men. And the one person that couldn't be affected was this completely deaf soldier that could not hear her siren. And there's a lot of dancing and a lot of the camera movement was insane because it's all, it is CG, but it's mocap CG the way they did it. My favorite part of that episode is the, the, just the audio effect they did for everything. Because from going from his part, it's just like oh, this, being deaf, like a hollow, yeah, like you just muffled. see this, and then it goes into like the the wild screams and dance and music, mm-hmm. and it's just it, it's very very yeah. artistic. Uh, fun note that short. Um, the reason it's getting a lot of proclivity <laughs> is it is entirely made through Unreal Engine five. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It makes yeah. sense. I, I there's something about it that like seemed a bit familiar. Well, and then the scenery was super photorealistic, but I, yeah. I still I knew it was animated. You could see it. But it's super photorealistic. And um I wanna at a later time uh in a future episode or game talk, I wanna definitely like talk about um more about going. Unreal Engine Five because they're doing. There's just some crazy stuff, yeah. crazy projects coming out of that, out of that engine. But um, Nick, were there any? Let's go around. And, you guys have favorites, uh, Nick? I have a definite favorite. I know you do, sir. Uh, Nicholas, were there any um, standouts for you, uh, either mentioned or not? Yes. Um, I I know Ryan's probably going to agree with me on this one. Kill team kill. That was a great one. I love that one too, Nick. That one that was fucking awesome. That was wild and fun. That uh, whole like uh commandos are dead. It's uh what was it? They were, they were searching a mecha for someone. Yeah. Searching yeah. for yeah, they were, the mecha. To, they were supposed to um go back to meet up with their other team who has completely stopped responding. Yeah. And there's a reason why. Mm -hmm. And the other one that I really liked, the reason why I liked it is because it reminded me of one of my favorite animated movies growing up. Um, Have you guys seen uh, Heavy Metal? Yeah. Yeah. Um, One of the best movies ever made. uh, The very pulse of the machine reminded me very much of that. The the whole animation of it. Hmm. I definitely, I definitely see what you mean. Um, or can 
imagine anyway. Mm-hmm. And I actually really liked it the way it was was set up. So, um, but my 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 favorites would have to be Kill Team Kill or the. Oh, what was the, the if one you describe with, it for me, I can tell you what it is. Yeah, I got one all the episodes. With giant crab. Oh, uh, swarm. That no, that that no. that that was a different one. Um, the bad travel, bad traveling, bad traveling. Yes, that was a fucking awesome one. I did. I don't mm-hmm. even. That's a. Oh, that's a the pirate ship. One. Yeah, that's fucking great. Crab. That one was Dude, interesting. That was brutal. Mm-hmm. I the, loved the, that. Yeah, the one guy just kept utilizing the yeah. crew and. Oh man, fucking it was smart. weird that it was like a That's like a, a sentient crab that would like yeah. possess the. Corpses. I want to know more about that world. Like it was very fascinating and also really good animation, very realistic. I mean, that one definitely begged me to want to know more about the world, similar to how Beyond the Aquila Rift in season one did, with mm-hmm. the dude who's uh, lost. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it makes me want to know more, and it makes me sad that I can't in this exact medium anyway. I know that's the, that that is like the the only downside. The double edged sword anthology stories is you you latch on to a really good one, and you're like, ah, you get what this you is, get. This is all it is. Ah, it's a short. Some of these ended very ambiguously too. Mm-hmm. Um, like you brought up the swarm. Vip. The ending on that's like, what the hell happened next? Uh, yeah, the swarm had a really cool beginning, like a really fascinating. It's like two scientists. Yeah. I really um, wanted to get learning about these different creatures that are just in harmony, and yeah. then, and then it got it got real wild at the end. There, human you know, ambition, oh, man, ruins everything. Well, yeah, I did, man, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> There's one episode though for me that standed above <clears throat> or stood above all the others to me. And it's because it's based off of a a short story from S- Snafu. Um it's a collection of sh- horror short stories with military influences. Ah, in mm. vaulted um, halls, in vaulted and halls and tombed with oh. Joe Manganiello. They did a re- they did some actors. really good they did some really good face cap. I recognize yeah. uh, most of the them. moment. I saw his nose. I knew it was him. I was like, and you could you hear see him it. from the side profile. I was like, that's Joe Mangianello's nose. You could hear it in his voice too. Yeah. Um, Jai Courtney is the other actor that yeah. w- was alongside him. And then uh, um, I, th- I get, was it Har- the character's name Harper? I uh, female actress. Uh, her name is Christian Serratos. I'm not sure yeah. what else she's in. I know but... who that is, but I couldn't remember her name. Oh, the reason I recognize why that her one now. spoke to me so well is because oh, it the walk does, he did, dude. Yeah, That's it does what a like. lot of uh, because it's a horror one. It's based off Snafu. It does what a lot of psychological horror and Lovecraftian horror stories fail to do today, and that's build that suspense of. Okay, things are getting fucked up. Things are really fucked up. How are we going to deal with this? Oh shit, we're fucked. And it's really and it hard to pull that, that off. <laughs> and it did it perfectly. And that's why it's my number one of the season. That because that's a hard thing to do with Lovecraftian <clears throat> horror. That was Joe, you know, what's that your number one? An intense end. Yeah, Joe. What's your number one? <laughs> um, Tell us, Joe. You can get oh naked for us, oh, Joe. Uh, just an honorable mention. Yeah. It was super short, but Night of the Mini Dead. Dude, that was great. It was all yeah, this... it was CG animated, but it all had a, a, a photorealistic feeling of it miniatures. It felt like really quick claymation. Yeah, like, like claymation really miniatures. Like all these cities were recreated and basically like watching uh, miniatures play out in a movie. All the voices were like hyper squeaky, like tiny little. Yeah. <laughs> And everything was like fast paced. It, uh, it was like a three, four minute episode. Night of the it's uh, seven, seven minutes, minutes, and it's that Night of the Living Dead reference in the very beginning. But instead, they yeah. start banging and knock over the cross and burn down. Oh, the they're like it's fast moving because yeah. it's all like time lapse sped up. But like, <laughs> if you watch closely, there's a lot of humorous little things happening yeah. in between the hikers. 
<laughs> and then great. uh mass level gore but it's all miniaturized <laughs> yes yeah. it felt so, like a little break in between like hey this is what we just did. Some super now serious, get ready for what's coming up. Psychological stuff, and then a little yeah. break in the action. Um, I'd say a close first, but I'm going to put it second, dude. Is honestly, I really liked the concept of swarm. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Um, I, I did like second. swarm. Swarm would be like probably top three, but vaulted halls and tomb. Um, I just love the really weird mind fuck of the uh lovecraftian concept that's just these weird bizarre otherworldly creatures that are it's not where i expected that monster to be no also. but i know it's just bizarre um but honestly my 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 personal favorite is night of the many dead i Good i'm voice, man i've been deeply sad i've been deeply in love with miniatures my whole life um it, from making them myself to watching an, uh, stop motion animation, and so this was a nice, like, collective nostalgic jolt with a beautiful amount of humor, uh, satire, and all that in here. But anyway, yeah. What was Night your favorite of the part of it? Mine. What's it? What was your favorite part of it? Oh, I love the beginning where the. <laughs> The two people are just like Same. F- fucking around and humping a statue, <laughs> and then the zombies are coming towards them and they don't even realize it. And then it's just that was hilarious. Yeah, I uh, love I love this season. It was so good. My my favorite out of all of them would still be uh, Kill Team Kill. Excellent choice. I don't really think there was a bad episode this season. Like there was none that I didn't like. The only one that was maybe. I don't know. No, I mean, I like, yeah, I really don't have anything negative to say. Like, uh, Jabaro was a season bit... had one that I didn't like, and first season had one I didn't like. Jabaro was weird, but I didn't dislike it. I didn't dislike it, but it was a little jarring at first because I was just like, I just trying to like understand what's going on, but it was beautiful. Like, like to watch. season one had uh the, that was it the fucking pudding. I found that one kind of boring, and then season two had. It wasn't that I didn't like the story of the first episode of season two, the one with the killer death robot um, house appliance. No, I but also I, feel I like just hated the art style. Weird. Yeah, yeah, the art, the art style, style was, was just weird. awful to look at. So that yeah. was like the only reason I hated that one. I loved the story, but I hated the art style. So I was like, I don't want to watch this one again. Yeah, it was hard. But season three, I felt looked good, no matter like throughout, in every um, different art style. The one I actually was kind of let down by was the sequel. Oh yeah, loved it of uh, of the three robots. Yeah, like I love. It's Steve not that I didn't like it, but yeah. I expected more. Yeah, it didn't up the ante like it should have. It was just kind of more of the same, it but not a in little, a good way. It felt a little, yeah, recycled. Know, short. Like. Three I wanted robots. to see how they got out of the situation they were in. And you know what's what's sad is like it's uh I mean the first one was in 2019, it was just called Three Robots, and there yeah. isn't yeah, there's no follow-up until that. Well, I think is this officially the first follow-up? This is I the think first follow-up out of all the stories. So I mean I if feel like so they were original two through of Love Death and Robots, though. I don't think they're from anything like a lot of the other ones are. Because most of the stories are from like short story anthology books, comics, and things like um, that. I feel like this one might be their own original thing, similar to what I think might have been the Freezer episode, the one live action one. Yeah, that that was bizarre to see a live action really, one out of the whole mix. I kind of enjoyed that one <laughs> a little bit too much. No, it was it was cool. It was just again, it was one of those yeah, it was different. unexpected things. Yeah. It's actually just now that I think about it, that was a for me anyway, because I know the first season showed differently for most people. That was my last episode. And the last episode of this season was Jabaro. And both of those episodes are very different. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the last episode of season two. I think that was the one with Michael B. Jordan, maybe. No. um... I'm on Netflix right now. I can go pull it up. Well, I'm on. uh, Yeah, I was. I'm on the Drowned Giant. Yeah, oh, the, the drone giant, giant was, was weird. weird. 
So yeah, I think yeah. each the, each of the last episodes always something kind of weird and a little thought provoking. After all the weird and horrifying shit we've seen before. Yeah. Ice Age was the freezer episode in season one. Yeah. And then they did the animated alternate history, which is like an alternate thing to like Where Hitler. you kill Hitler over and yeah. over again. Which was okay. The last one was called The Secret War. Red that Army was my Unholy favorite Evil. episode of season one. Yeah, that one I'll have to rewatch. I fucking love I've I've watched that one the most of any episode huh. in this show. But yeah. I feel like this series is honestly proof that we could make heavy metal again. <laughs> Yeah, I like I could see that. Just like the wild variety of animation and storytelling that's happening here. Yeah, and, and then just have some kind of overarching actual plot in the background that connects them all. That's really yeah. all we need. Yeah, it could be done. To be fair, though, a lot of those writers were on acid during the writing. We can get them some more acid. <laughs> I don't know that. That's complete fabrication. I don't care. We can get them some acid. It's fine. If that's maybe what it they takes. Were, maybe they were just stoned. I don't know. Hi. I, 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 it's where you live in Oregon. It's <laughs> legal. We'll get some. Uh, it's legal in a lot of places now. But, yeah. Um, that being said, guys, yeah. uh, uh, number. You guys want to put a number on this? I think everyone's going to probably be pretty high up there. Nicholas. I'm going to give you... An eight five. What brought it down from being a masterpiece to you? Like, what are some, what are some of the takeaways? Because we've been praising it this whole time, and then you give it an eight five. It's no, like, no, that's, I think that's I, a, that's a great I understand point. why he's doing it. Um, I, well, I was just curious, like, if I there's know. any major, um shortcomings that's the thing um i don't feel that this season had the thought-provoking episodes as much as like how in the first season there was that one like uh the two salesmen out in the desert and all this other stuff there's just all these weird things that were new and fresh and this one didn't quite have that same feeling they leaned into violence and gore in this season yeah anything and that was the center focus of the whole thing. Yeah. And we see a lot of that. Yeah, and, and, and it's, it's great. It's but... not that I don't enjoy it. It's just I was expecting something different. Yeah. I, I think I know exactly how you feel. And that's kind of why my rating's where it's at, too. Mine being a nine. And it's for that exact same reason. And also... If you're going to do a follow-up for an episode, which I did love the Three Robots continuation, I just felt it should have been a little bit more. Yeah. And that's why it's a 9 and not a 10 for me. Fair enough. I will also uh, chime in with a 9. Um, I would say for the only, only particular reason is just... Uh, in alignment with both of you guys, the um, let less mind bending concepts, still a fun ride, but I don't know. Love death and robots. The way this series is set up and the way the first season was it and just, second season too, in a couple it, episodes and second, even though it's shorter. Yeah. It just makes me f- uh, feel like they need to keep, keep the indie writing and storytelling ante up especially with a a fourth season if they go there yeah there's an episode in season two that i'd like to call back to for the whole thought provokingness in episode two we had the episode where having kids was illegal Mm. if you didn't have like a certain uh like you basically had to get a permit to have a kid and yeah. they had all these like life extension things. And basically it was just illegal to have kids. And it really came up to that concept of like this detective is someone who hunts these people down and has to put them away. And then he finds this lady with a child who's like, you know, full of life and all this. And he has to make this decision. And it really like makes you think like, how do you live in a society like that when 
in mm-hmm. reality, our kids are often the biggest parts of our lives as humans. Creating another life, watching them grow, it's the human experience, and you take that away, and you live forever, what's the point? And in this season, yeah, like Nick said, it's mostly focused on violence. There's a little sh- some humor here and there, but it's mostly violence. And I love violence. Don't get me wrong. I'm a big advocate for it. Look at you, Waxen Philosophy. <laughs> uh, also, just to let everyone know, that is Season 2, Episode 3, called Pop Squad. Yeah. A uh, future where resources are controlled by the rich, unregistered offspring are forbidden by the state. A police officer charged with enforcing population control faces a crisis of conscience. Conscience, because uh, she's charged with ha- needing to exterminate the child, basically, because they're not supposed to have this child. Yeah, and uh, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, that was a, a very episode. social thought-provoking concept. Because the cops <clears throat> are forced to kill these kids, and when you finally come across it and you're like, I just can't fucking do this. I can't stomach the idea of doing this to an innocent life. Yeah. It sucks. And I think that's the thought provokingness I want from media. I want something to make me feel not just good, but awful. Feel awful about terminating this life. Okay, right no, that thing's America. uncanny Valley. The, the last kid you see is adorable. That thing is creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be real here. I, I was just pulling up <laughs> no, screenshots just, from I'm, the I'm episode just with you, man. I'm just fucking. I'm doing a bit, but oh my gosh, you callous! He looks <clears> so <throat> familiar. He looks like this one actor, and I can't remember his name. God, it's well, driving me nuts. Let's take a quick peek they, at like, the lead actor, it. Nolan North, Detective okay. Briggs. So it's not based on him, but there's like this actor, and he's in a lot of stuff, and he looks just like that guy. I just got to say, though, Craig Ferguson as Mason was perfect. Oh, yes. God. He, <laughs> that episode, his voice acting was beautiful. Just beautiful for that character. Mason's Rats was so awesome. And that was that one did have the thought provokingness to it, just not as deep. Because it's like he realized the effects of the war that he had been waging with these rats. Yeah, and decided to end it himself. But it well, only... yeah, when he realized when he saw, you know, the massacre. Yeah, and he's like that oh. they're sentient. Yeah, that they were like no man left behind carrying one of the limping rats, and he's like, oh my gosh. And then he saw they were making moonshine. (laughs) It's like, you know, maybe we're not so different after all. It's like, let me try that. Um, I love what these these shows can do. Yeah, some really good storytellers, animators, thought provokers. What was your least favorite, Joe? What? What was your least favorite? Other than maybe Jabaro, because I feel like that's what you're going to say. Oh, because I, I like mean, tomorrow, but I, I oh, guess why three. that's probably my least favorite too. Yeah, honestly, it's I Jibaro. can't think of a different one. It's gonna Jabaro is just a little jarring upon first watch, but it, it's like it's got a, a beautiful thing about it artistically. But I, it would probably be my least favorite. I didn't connect with it. Personally. Yeah, same. I felt the weakest was Three Robots. Yeah, storytelling I wise, why, I agree with you. But, um, yeah, storytelling well, wise, I agree. Because I don't think they need to do the sequel thing. Because you're going to fall into a trap with sequels. This is an anthology. Why would you do a sequel in an anthology series? Yeah, I think that is an it, it is the Netflix brand for the show, and I think that's the only reason they came back with it. Maybe I then why wasn't the second one? Pure, I, pure speculation. Yeah. Also, you know what I'm glad to one came out in 2020, didn't it? Right hmm. around the pandemic time. I'm glad that uh, Good Hunting did not get a sequel because I felt like where they ended that in season one was perfect. That's Good the anim- That's the uh, 2D animation style with the Huli Jing in uh, ancient China. Mm. Yeah, that w- the way that ended was perfect. And if they had done a sequel, I would kind of, I would have been a little upset about that with the Kitsune type character. Yeah, the Kitsune yeah. robot. 
Yeah, I don't know. I I feel like that season was way shorter too. Season two was way shorter than any of the seasons. There was only eight episodes in season two, and it came out May twenty twenty one. So literally, during this was like probably being produced and worked on during the pandemic or the start of it in twenty twenty. Yeah. So I don't. Who knows? There's reasons we didn't get a second. I wouldn't robots. mind like separate from Love, Death, and Robots if they did a three robots like short film that was just separate from the anthology. Now, yeah, there there are some of these that were that I would love to see the the universe that this is around just for the sheer fact that yeah, it would be badass. I think um, it would be fun for some of them. Yeah, yeah, um, like uh, the the. The dog soldiers in the oh yeah i forgot about them that was awesome yeah the werewolves yeah um <clears throat> the it but i would do these as something completely separate than yeah. love death and robots yeah. say so, like take your most popular ones from the anthology and then just make like a mini series about it separate from love death Miniseries or a full length movie yeah. for it, because like we've already had, we've had two types of different, like different types of horror genres in Afghanistan. Now, I feel like those two could go together. But yeah, Love, Death, and Robots. I feel like could take three robots and make its own film. Mm-hmm. And it could, fun. for sure, for sure, it could. There, there's a few that I'd love to see continued. Uh, yeah. The in the first season, there's the the robot one, the the fighting robot. Uh, I mean, not the fighting robot, the but monster, Sunny's yeah. Edge. Sunny's Edge. Yeah, that was a fucking cool one. That would be cool to see like a full movie of that. Yeah, and it has the perfect setup to make a good movie. <laughs> Cyberpunk esque with I like there's. I like the animation on that one. That one was good. Guys, coming out Friday, June 3rd on Amazon Prime is the Amazon Prime original, The Boys. The Boys. Season We're going to be sliding into season three of The Boys. We're going to be sliding into season three of The Boys. Oh. Sliding into the boys, season three. In and out, because I don't think it'll be all at once. No. You always have a way of doing this to me. I thought you were going to say Hello Kitty Island Adventure. That isn't for gaming bits. Nicholas? This is neither here nor there, sir. You're going to have to find a way to rip a hole into the multiverse before we ever finally get around to that. Or we need to yank our red ginger I'll back be in. right back. Oh, okay. Transition has been ruined. <laughs> Damn it, Nick. You're supposed to like laugh real loud so that could be like a cold open it, intro. It is time for <laughs> Hello Kitty. Wow. You, Island Adventure. You phoned that in, Nick, and nice job, Ryan. Hello Kitty. I, I wish Matt could be here to see the beautiful representation you've brought to the table it's glitchy i can make myself disappear yeah yeah oh now we are just talking to the kitty herself your kitty keeps disappearing it does that unless you pay (laughs) all right guys back to action season three of the boys Hello Kitty Island Adventure. There Season we go. Three of the boys. Full presentation right there. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Ryan, for presenting us with Yeah. This next season I am excited for. Same Soldier Boy is gonna be in it. Alright, guys. Shall we just do Jump the in? thing? I don't think the boys. Alright. Step on in. Boys. All right, here we go, guys. <clears throat> Live and in color. That the color boys season orange. three. So, let me say it again. Maybe a superhero, but I'm also just a man who fell in love with the wrong woman. 
It's the man who fell for the wrong woman. Uh, fell for the wrong woman. But, but out of crisis of, comes uh, change. Crisis. I'm, I'm sensing crisis. a theme here. I mean, like uh, regular news channels today? I am very excited for everyone to meet the real me. I love Anthony Sarr. There's something Sar. wrong with Homelander. <laughs> There's something broken. He's lost oh, his God. fucking mind. <laughs> love mommy and daddy and all. <laughs> oh, my gosh. We've <laughs> been on the straight and narrow all year. No killing soups. No drinking. Even follow Hugh Campbell's orders without strangling him. Oh man, I'm just being cruel. Or maybe you're not such an asshole. I love you, Carl Urban. Oh, superpowers. But real power isn't. This. Oh my gosh, he's in it. It's the ability to bend the world to your will. Come on, show me Jensen Ackles. <clears throat> Where is he? The gloves are off. That we can fight not the right way, but we can't. It's all rigged. We have to do it your way. Oh, we're all we've got. It's up to us. That was explosive. I think I have something. Maybe we can use it yeah. to blow Homelander's fucking brains out. In a in a manner of speaking, he does. Oh. What's this? Some soup for twenty-four Damn. hours. You're gonna need it. I wonder if we're going to get to see you punch a hole in someone's chest. Point of what we do is that no one should have that kind of power. Oh my gosh. For once, I'll level the fucking playing field. I show people the real me. Oh, <laughs> God damn. I mean, they fucking love me. Yes, I do. There's going to be a musical number? No way. That'd be great. This is the boy season three. Christ, soldier boy. So, oh, supposedly, Whoa. episode six of this is going to cover a certain comic that uh, happens with uh, Homelander and uh, Soldier Boy. A little fun get getaway to a superhero retreat. Orgy. Yeah, that that's the word. Oh, orgy. Oh, all I want to say is uh, my favorite gore moment. I didn't know how much we'd get in a trailer. Was right? was two people running away and then bursting into meat chunks. Gotta love it. No, in in the in the um, the graphic novels, there's definitely a scene with what you speak, and there's also <laughs> the dude that stretches and. Oh. That episode six is going to cover that, as from what yep. I've read. But uh, yeah, I'm I'm really hoping we get the scene where Huey punches a fucking hole in one of the uh, teenage kicks' his chest. I saw some moments I'm excited for. Yeah, does this show go week to week? Has I it... think they're going to be doing that again because they did that with the first season. And the second season. Yeah, and the second. Like, okay. So I All waited right, until we'll half the second released. season. All right. Well, we'll have enough time for episode one hot takes next time we reconvene. And um, yeah, yeah, that sounds great. I'm, 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 I'm excited for Friday. I can't messed up. The Homelander is. Dude, I fucking love Anthony Starr's portrayal <sighs> of him. He's so good. Like. Oh. He's Milking still my favorite cow, dude. Casting. Right? <laughs> oh, I don't even know what to I, watch I, I, I feel to giddy about this. It's not that I'm hyped. I'm giddy about this season. I can't wait. You sound like a man in love with a show. I am with Anthony Starr and Jensen Ackles. Mostly Who Jensen Ackles. I was just going to go with the broad Oh, I love the show. show. It's one of my favorite shows ever made, but... But you made, a, is, you made a connection, sir. Look, man, we we I had you stop on Thor. Let's be hey, real here. That's Chris Hemsworth, man. <laughs> yeah, Chris Hemsworth is a goddamn god. Until he's he doesn't unable... even need to be Thor to be a god. <laughs> 
True. Indeed. Absolutely true. Uh, man, there's so many things to react, dude. And like, I just, <sighs> oh. it just saddens me kind of seeing uh, Carl Urban go full super. Um, knowing that we will never get a dread to. Why'd you have to do that to me? Sorry. Never. I you mean, we're not. I guess. I guess not. Maybe not with him. I don't know. It, it's if it's not with him, <laughs> I don't want it. There, there will be no other dread other than him. Yeah, he was the perfect dread. All right. Well, let's start a not petition, even. guys. Let's start a petition. There's it's like already six been of started. Them. I've signed all of them. <laughs> well, like I guess I'm not what kidding. I, I've I signed all of them. <laughs> Ryan, I guess what I'm suggesting is that you is not that just sign them into our own hands, but be proactive about it, bro. That's what I'm You're saying. You're right. Storm the studio. Storm yeah. with an army of people. All demanding well chanting dread two, dread two, dread two. Carl Urban only. <laughs> no, like, like I said, yeah, Carl Urban's one of the best actors, and he he deserves more roles. I love him. I love him too, uh, Nick. I dare say, um, man, we've got so many things to watch and or react to. Dude, so much. Um, I wish I could go back to weekly, but for the immediate future time being right now, I kind of have to hold off because <sighs> we got, you know, Obi-Wan just launched. I'm just teasing for next recording. Yeah. Throwing this out there before we move on for TV guys. BRB. You can keep talking about this. All right. All right. Just to close out TV talk uh, by, by saying what we'll tease. Uh, we'll give first impressions, hot takes on the boys season three um i feel like we could definitely do um star wars and or teaser trailer drop for disney plus but i think we still got some time up before that comes out obi-wan kenobi just dropped the first two episodes we may have to come back and do some hot takes with ryan on our next recording and the huge gigantic stranger things season four is in full swing right now I didn't have time to watch it, guys. So I'm just teasing that out. Upon our next recording, we will be diving in deep spoiler territory abound. And, uh, man, there's a few more things out there uh, offhandedly that I think we'll mention or give hot takes on. But that being said, all right, guys. Well, um, love, death, and robots. We love it. There's death. Fuck it, that was we talking about this entire time. No, actually, when you walked away, I did tease a few things that we're going to cover, like Star um, Wars, the boys, Star the Wars. Boys. Oh yeah, we did the boys Kenobi. react. That's what it was. We did react to the boys actually last. As I don't know why I my bad. No, dude, that was it's a all good. Poor segue. It's too late, it's a, man. It's, okay. it's getting late. It's poor segue. Let's move on, guys. We're gonna jump into some game and bits and do uh, another trailer react or some fun, exciting, upcoming things. Here we go. Guys, without further ado, it's Game and Bits. Welcome to Gaming Bits, guys. Our final chapter, if you will, in this already long-in-the-tooth episode. But thanks for sticking around. If you guys have enjoyed it, stick around a little bit longer. We're going to do one more trailer reaction for Gaming Bits. We're going to cover, or rather react to, Star Wars Jedi colon Survivor. And that is a sequel to Star Wars Jedi colon Fallen Order. Just had to put that in there for for anyone that's blind or a little slow like me, because I'm a little slow, especially at 2 a.m. Spoiler warning, that's how late it is right now for us guys. I'm always and, slow. Eh. Slow is smooth. Mm. Smooth is fast. You know what? I like your groove, Ryan. I like your groove. Especially now that you're popping in some caffeine into the mouth right now. I, I just spit that out because it's got it got way too strong. I'm like, nope. nope. <laughs> 
<laughs> not doing this. A little caffeinated it crack great cocaine. For like, it tasted great for like two minutes, and I'm just like, Mm-mm. no, I'll drink regular coffee. It's fine. So shall we see what's going on with Cal Kestis? Let's do it. I'm excited. We should. I we love should. that guy. Here we go. Sorry, I didn't have this pulled up. I mean, I do have it pulled up. I'm just going to share it. Oh, my God. Pulled out? So unprofessional never. I am. No, never pull out. Never surrender. Never. Just move to a different country. They never suspected. <laughs> really I've done it five times. Slightly. Our accents are going to be weird if I cut out the last part there, Ryan. So we'll see what happens. I don't care. Yeah, I know you don't. <laughs> this is you what they always sound like. This is not my real voice. We're having this is my customer service voice. That is very customer service oriented. Now that we've had, now that you guys have had ample time on YouTube to watch the rating disclaimer may contain content inappropriate for children from our dear friends at ESRB. Will they let us dismember people now? I will. Let's find out. Let's watch the trailer there, Mr. Ryan. Here we go. Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I keep wanting to say Fallen Order again. I know. <sighs> Speaking of marching, Electronic Arts respawn. Mm-hmm. Tell me, Cal Kestis, why the this looks fucking awesome. It does. Follow. Why? What? No. When you can't win, what is your next move, Jedi? Yeah, the robot's back. <laughs> Ryan? Yes. Who's in there? Was that Star Killer? I think so. Ah, oh, we don't have a date, but we have 2023, I... friends. I mean, I can't say with certainty, but I think it was. Star Killer. You be talking about Force Unleashed Star Killer? Yeah. Yeah. That right there. Are you, I did. I thought that might have been a girl. There's a lot of long hair. I don't know. There. It kind of. It kind of. Hey, dude. I got long hair, man. What are you saying? I'm not <laughs> criticizing the length of hair. I'm just saying the fe- facial features didn't immediately speak. It, it zooms but, out a bit. Hold on. Uh, I don't know about the time frame. Yeah. See that. that that's Pax, man. That's Pax. And Star Killer would be around right now. Are they going to make Star Killer canon? Uh, I mean, oh. it very well couldn't be. We could be very wrong, but yeah. God, I have look, a... at, look how good his face looks here, though. Oh. Like he looked great in uh, Fallen Order. Oh, but him. He looks like it's just fucking him. It's not even like a CG ver- version of him. It looks just Un- like Uncanny him. Valley. Yeah, there, guys. I'm telling I mean, you, he already had kind of an Uncanny Valley face, but. Our current generation of game engines are just getting so powerful. Getting nuts. Yeah. Oh god, dude. Photorealism is hitting an all time high, man. Dude, when I showed my dad Red Dead Redemption Two, it blew his fucking mind. Isn't that so fun? Like, I mean, you grab an older generation of people that are out completely out of the loop on yeah, current like, gaming. He, he played some Xbox three sixty games and that's kind of where it stopped. Yeah, but yeah, this blue, yeah, that's a couple generations yeah. ago now. Yeah, Series X and S shit. He was like, what the fuck? You can see his pores. I'm like, yeah, I know, right? And like the like other this. thing about that is like, to be fair, seeing the pores in a character's skin was doable if it was pure pre-rendered CGI. Yeah. But these are these things are now like in engine in real time, being rendered 
as like if you're playing in the game. That's what we're starting yeah. to see. And that but that is so that nuts. That game is going to be... With how Kingdom amazing Fallen Order was and how big it was for Star Wars games, I feel like this is going to be a step up even further. Dude, there's a... I got to look them up. I don't have it in front of me right now. I just, I know there's like two or three other Star Wars projects. Um, because after, after the EA separation from the license, the 10 year licensing that they had a hold of for freaking ever, it it's felt like on their part that now Lucasfilm is outsourcing to multiple studios. That's why there's literally like yeah. three three or four Star Wars projects in the, in development right now. I could you see know, Star I, Wars becoming the next Doctor Who in length. In like length. the way... Because Doctor Who's been around for over 50 years now. And Star oh, Wars yeah. is encroaching on that too. But I feel like yeah. Star Wars is going to be around a long time. I it's mean, especially... It's... Pretend, it's infinite potential. Yeah, it's current trajectory, uh, you know, post the prequel trilogy and post George Lucas selling it over. It's it's had some bumps. It's gonna it's it's Disney's been going through ups and downs with trying to get it on the right track. Yeah. But it's definitely on an upward trajectory right now. Yeah. You know, like we have all the side media now that's just so good. It's yeah. Obi Wan Kenobi just released as for shows. Uh, an Andor side series is there's a teaser that. trailer out right now for Disney Plus as well. And um, oh, and season three, there's some teasers or talk of season three of Mandalorian already. Fuck uh, I saw it online. I haven't seen any footage yet, but. All these things are continuous, and then there's, like I said, three to four games right now in active development. I think there's currently a remake of Knights of the Old Republic <coughs> happening yeah. right now. And I am insanely hyped about that. I but played the shit out of the, the original. I even have it on the, mobile. Yeah. <laughs> the original. Yeah. Yeah, they ported it everywhere. Yeah, it's I kind of like a... mobile PC and the original Xbox. It's like an Elder Scrolls Oblivion thing where they've just ported that to literally everything. Yeah. Um, um, but this game... Yeah. Jedi I Survivor, hope it dude. garners the same amount of hype. I mean, I know it won't, but I hope it gets similar to the same amount of hype that Elden Ring had, considering that it is another Souls-like game. I'm I'm hoping that like we should we need to get some talk um, you know about that that connection there because I, I mean Fantasy and sci-fi are very different, but uh, you yeah. know, Star Wars is a very sci-fi with fantasy accents all over fantasy. it. Sci-fi fantasy, yeah. It's not. It's not like Star Trek pure sci-fi. 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 <laughs> Sci-fi. 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 When they change the when they change the spelling, let's, let's coin it. The network, it's our own term. But we're gonna call it sci-fi. Sci fantasy. Science oh, there you go. Fantasy. I see what you did there. I see what you did there. And also because it gives me a way, reason to say the mage from Castlevania's name again. Just a little well time. Done, sir. Well done. Um, Nick. Any <laughs> you, you want to make a closing? I know you want to make a closing statement on this Jedi Survivor, and then we'll we'll close out. Um, I'm excited for it. Um, I honestly think that was Starkiller. Um, I'm glad to see a continuation of the Cal Castus story from Fallen Order. Um, and if they continue along with the progress of what they were doing in the first game with the new engine and the new mechanics and the new technology they have, it's going to be amazing. Fuck yeah, bro. Noise, noise, <laughs> noise, noise. <laughs> chef's kiss, chef's kiss. That's right. Let's let's um, Halo, the Halo God narrator. Killing spree. In. Yeah, <laughs> it's 
Yeah. Kill him and dry. Kill him and Jaro. You remember back in the day when you get all like what is it, 20 kills in a row? Something it'd be like un freaking believable. I the first time I ever got that. <laughs> God, that was like it's like you're right. I am God. Combo breaker. You're like, it I, is. I, I you're really right. hope they make another Killer Instinct. You're right. It is unfreaking believable. I'm shitting myself right now. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, guys. Uh, all right. Well, guys, let's, let's close it out. Let's close it out. Uh, it's late, long, and all that, and we've had some fun here. I hope. I hope you listeners have had fun listening. And if you guys would like to pipe in, make a comment, suggestion, or just share your thoughts, like I don't know, one of the best places you could possibly do that, if they want to, sir. If they want to, I think one of the best places to do that is you could add us over Twitter at Nerdentials. You know, some direct, some tweets, just tweet at us about it. Or if you guys want to get a little more serious or a little more lengthy about your conversation, you guys could shoot out an email. Classic old school email, nerdentials at gmail.com. You guys could definitely do that. Um, But Nick, you, you want to chime in? Yeah. Um. For anyone out there that's trying to hit the dating uh, world out there, I have a new pickup line for you. <laughs> that's going to sound real good in the podcaster's ears. <clears throat> you guys are welcome. They, to, they know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They know exactly yeah. what it is. We all they do. probably used it already. I'm single. I, if you, you know, sometimes I was gonna say, well, if that's true, and you guys are listening from inside your prison cell, thank you for being a listener. Uh, mm-hmm. We appreciate you too. I'm still in the basement. They haven't let me out yet. <laughs> uh, he knows the pickup line very well. Yes. No, I'm serious. Like, I mean, they allow. Uh, I don't know what they allow. I haven't never been to prison, <clears throat> so never you mind. Go to prison. Get a newspaper, get it wet, let it dry, get it wet again, let it dry. You can make yourself body armor and weapons. Interesting. We'll cover that in a future side episode. No, we won't. For now, for, for now <laughs> we're trying to close out, mister. <laughs> well, guys, um, you, you know, you can listen to us oh, wherever podcasts are found. I'm going to just keep talking over you because I, no, yeah, I feel like not, you're... Please. I feel like you're implementing dirty, nasty, subliminal messaging, sir. I don't know what you're doing. I also, I have it. Naked. And Chris Hemsworth's butt. Hemsworth's. That pl- double oh, pluralized yeah. his it last was name. That was weird. <laughs> it was blurred, though. It's Disney. They had to. I don't know. I feel Did ripped they? off. You flicked too hard. Anyway, guys, uh, thanks for listening. That's what she said. It's been fun, Nick. It's been fun, Ryan. It's always fun. It's been fun, guys. And and while you keep peeling back that tape, I'm going to go lock the the cellar door so you can't get down here. (laughs) You act like you live nearby. You mean? <laughs> but you're you the only Nick. one that's not here. Yeah, I know. I, I know. I was, anyway, you could I was save being, me, but you choose not to. I was being facetious, and sir, that's like a three to four hour drive that I'm not ready to make at 2 a.m. Um, sir, we've made it in two and a half hours. I'm not going to yeah, drive that fast two at 2 a.m. This is the best time to drive that fast. No, I don't drive... That well in the dark. Those those were the days, weren't they, Joe? They were, the, were days. the days. They were good Just days. Just kickstart my heart and haul ass down the highway. Do you need an adrenaline shot? No, I've got bang right here. Save it for another time. Right, I'm not Guys, right yeah, she bang, she bang. Yeah, yeah, she move, she move. 
Well, guys, that's gonna. You know what? We gotta stop making things awkward and dragging it out. There's nothing else I can say or do. I'm just to trying to get to that more... perfect three hour. Oh, <laughs> it's not gonna come out that long though, because I like know. the first twenty to thirty minutes were kind of a. F- that's what she said. I mean, you guys might have had some excellent conversation. I don't know. I I was not privy to it yet. I don't know. I will be. I don't remember here, that right? far back. I I know it's been three hours. Well, um, we did talk about what different animes. animes Yes. Other nerd, other types of nerd stuff. I came in at the tail end of that. Weeb stuff. You say weed stuff? Weeb. 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 B. Weeb. And Ryan keeps dipping out like into the ether. It's so weird. Let's do this. Well, now I can't do it when I want to. There we go. All right, guys. Well, for me, myself and I. Oh, and my cohorts, Nick and Ryan. This has been your Nerdy Essentials. And with Nick's wonderful high definition lip line, we bid you adieu. <laughs> we'll. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the on the other side. On the other side. Mm. Only your side. Mm.